Disturbing things hikers encountered in the woods by Mr. Nightmare. Yeah, man, the woods can be a crazy place, especially at nighttime. If you go into the woods, it's pretty much a thing that we all know. Don't go in the woods at night. If, the, if it's nighttime, stay your motherfucking ass in your yard, in your house. Don't go in the woods. But some people don't listen to that rule, man. They've been trying to the woods and they see some crazy things. So we're about to go. I mean, these are just, these are hikers. So they was probably just, you know, walking around during the daytime, but still seeing some craziness. So Mr. Nightmare is here to tell us about this stuff, man. Let's go ahead and check it out without further ado. Oh yeah, make sure y'all cut off y'all lights. Okay, cut off y'all lights without further ado. They get it. I be having to say, cause I feel like some of y'all be home with me, man. I feel like y'all be not cutting your lights off. Got me watching these scary videos with my lights off. But y'all want to cut y'all shit off. Hold on, wait a minute. First of all, that loud ass sound in my ear. 2014, a man named Ethan and his wife, Danny, were spending a weekend together on Vancouver Island. Okay. Which they had done many times before. The couple has a lot of experience on the island and just camping in general. Vancouver Island provides an optimal camping setting because of its mix of scenic beaches and dense forest. All right. They had many successful camping trips on the island until something truly terrifying happened to them on their final outing on the islands. Oh. Ethan and Danny were far from any roads or civilization, enjoying the solitude. They set up camp on a beach a good distance from anywhere, and kept a fire going. To get to the trail leaving the beach was a kilometer along the beach and two kilometers to the road through the forest. Okay. The couple had met another camper named Leon from New Zealand, who they ran into earlier that day on the beach. Leon was planning on sleeping in his van, which he parked back up on the road. The couple invited him down to the beach for a fire, and the three shared a bottle of wine talking amongst themselves around the fire. Okay. This is where things started to get a little creepy. Oh, I'll put some subtitles The sun was starting to go down by this point. Bad job. The trio kept hearing what sounded like female voices from behind them in the bushes, dividing the beach from the forest. It wasn't too dark out yet, the though, fuck was that? so it was still possible that they were just Bro. other hikers or campers nearby, or even a group who anchored offshore and the sound was just bouncing in a weird way. All three of them could agree that they were hearing female voices, though. Mm -hmm. On that note, it was getting Stop. late and a little dark, <laughs> so Leon said goodbye and set out to hike back to his car before it was too dark. Ethan and Danny stayed by their campsite and stoked the fire because Danny was starting to get creeped out by the voices, which okay. continued on into the darkness. It sounded like two female voices speaking, but whatever that was being said was unintelligible. Mm -hmm. Oh? It sounded to the couple like the voices were not far beyond the tree line now. They stayed up very late tending to the fire. Coming towards you? When the voices had finally stopped, they decided to put out the fire and go to sleep in the tents. Okay. Before doing so, the two had scanned the cove with a flashlight several times looking for boats that could have been the source of the talking. You didn't see nothing. There was nothing in sight. Okay. It was around 3 a.m. when they laid down finally, ready to catch some shut-eye. But about 15 minutes after they laid down, Ethan and Danny heard footsteps in the area around their campsite, over by where the fire was. They came from the direction of the bushes toward the inland behind them. Oh. A direction that was not traversable by people. The couple lay there, hoping it was just a bear or any animal. What do you mean, just the a bear? bears on the islands are black bears, which usually are very timid around people. Okay. The footsteps went from the fire Still. and over to the tent, then back into the woods. Five minutes later, the footsteps came back again to the fire. Oh. And now, clear as day, there were two female voices talking gibberish very loudly. The what? communication was not resembling any languages known to Ethan or Danny, and they seemed to be talking over each other, having what could barely be considered to be a conversation at full volume in the dead of night very far away from civilization, with right? using lights to navigate through the dense brush relatively quietly in a direction that seemed impossible to traverse on foot. Hold on, it's like some female tribe. The fire pit area over to the tent. They're gonna eat you. Still talking at a loud volume. They stood over the tent talking for a few seconds, then went completely dead as night silent. They went back into the woods to never be seen or heard again. Oh. Ethan and Danny lay there completely frozen and afraid for a long time. They woke up around 11 a.m. the next day because of how late they fell asleep. Okay. They packed up first thing and never returned. Yeah. The couple probably made the best decision to remain quiet in the tent, uh -huh. not drawing attention to themselves from whoever or whatever was outside the tent. Bro, that was probably first we had these damn sound effects. That was probably some fucking tribe or some shit, bro. Talking about very far away from civilization. Yeah, that was some sort of ancient tribe, bro. Hey, they would have they would have cooked you for dinner and and, and and had your flesh meat. You know what I'm saying? They they would they would have did that. <laughs> had you had you not shut up. So it's a good thing that you shut the hell up in that tent. <laughs> God damn, bro. Man, why y'all over there camping? Oh, that's not a good spot to camp at. Away away from civilization. Fuck all that. Hell no. Nah. Where, where did it take place at? Hold on. 347. I'm going to come back. Wait, wait, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. 
Oh, it's just the voices. Okay, never mind. They ain't give, I, I was trying to see if it gave a location, but they didn't. All right. Anyway, yeah, man. Y'all didn't get turned into a snack. That's good. Next video. <laughs> or not next video, next story. The following pictures you're about to see were taken by hikers Kylie Cash oh, and John Stone. Got they pictures? Both live in Eagle Mountain, Utah, a small town south of Salt Lake City. Okay. For the past few years, they had been exploring forests in search of interesting things. And one day they found it. One day Kylie was hiking in Cedar Fort, just five miles south of Salt Lake City. All right. While hiking, she found large amounts of animal bones and piles of junk people had dumped. But things started to get strange. Okay. They started coming across strange symbols and animal parts scattered throughout the forest. Oh. Some of them in weird formations. Oh, so I did it on purpose. She decided to bring her friend Josh along with her to show him in person the unusual things she was finding. This time, the two came across something even more disturbing. What? On the trail, there was a severed deer head and a pentagram surrounded by deer legs. Oh no, oh no. Not there the first no. time Kylie walked the trail. I'm gone, the I'm gone. Going down, I'm going home. Their pictures, they agreed it was time to head back to the car. Yeah. The more they walked, they realized they didn't recognize the path they were on. Oh. The two started looking around for anything that could refresh their memory of where they were. Then y'all got lost. Got dark out, the two accepted that they were lost. With nothing but their phone flashlights to navigate, they got lost. They getting the feeling they were being watched, as they picked up their pace, bro, they started to hear the trees and bushes moving at least twenty feet to their right. No, concerning by the fact that there was no wind that night, the two started to panic and hurried onto a trail they found, hoping it would take them back to Kylie's car. Okay. Just when things couldn't seem to get any worse, Kylie and Josh heard a scream so deep and horrific that it sounded neither human nor animal. Oh. Bro, you have to add down the trail. Kylie making a conscious effort not to look back, but Josh did. And Josh claimed to see a large black figure on the trail behind them. Too the big fuck? to be a human. The two made it to the car by some stroke of luck, losing whatever was chasing them. So they left the forest Bro. and went straight home. Upon doing research, Kylie found documents of common cult practices reported in those woods, as well as numerous murders and disappearances that happened in the area. But why was he too why was the thing too big to be a human? And Danny in the first story, Kylie has not returned since. What do you mean Kylie has not returned since? Did the, <laughs> a band of mugger. Did the other person return since what you had? To, and then somebody was too big to be a human and it made that big deep guttural roar that you that don't sound human. What was chasing them, bruh? This don't explain things. I need to know what was going on. Oh hell no, bruh. Damn, man, y'all got lost on the trail. Y'all must have been hiking really far. I'm not going that far away from my car. I'm, I don't like, I'm not going hiking in general. Even if I was to go hiking, I'm not going that, I'm not going that far, bro. Because what you, what you doing, baby? Couldn't find your way back. You almost got ate up by the crazy cult creature. You know, hey, it almost had you. Both, both of these stories almost resulted in people getting eaten. Shit crazy. Deep in the woods in northern Germany, two friends were hiking in an area formerly territory of the German Democratic Republic when they came across these strange periscope-like pipes protruding from the ground. What the hell? Feeling either brave or foolish, they decided to investigate further. Why would you go in there? They discovered a doorway hidden behind several bushes, covered by a large wooden lid. What they found hidden beneath the ground is a pretty disturbing piece of history. Bro, have you never seen any scary movie in your life? You never go into the abandoned bunker. There's something down there and it's going to eat you. Everyone in these stores is trying to get eaten alive, bruh. Stop it. <laughs> God damn, man. Shit, they ain't never seen a scary movie before. The doorway led to a huge abandoned army bunker. There were several abandoned leading off in different directions, which intersected a long central corridor. They're about to get lost. There were so many different directions to go that exploring the place felt like going through a maze to the two friends. But they did it anyway. They Dumbass. They stray far away from each other in fear of getting lost. That's how big the place was. As they ventured deeper into the structure, fucking stupid, they came bro. across German writing on the wall, which translated to help. Oh, he still got the better of them, and they continued deeper into the bunker. And as they did, the structure became more and more decayed. More writings were found on the walls. This time reading, hello, Satan, I love you. Oh, no. The rooms and corridors were flooded and smelled. Turn your ass around and go home. Their way into a very large room with a strange machine in the center. Huh? Very possible the previous occupants had fled the bunker in a hurry 
as there was a single shoe still stuck in the sludge on the floor. Wow. Why wouldn't someone have time to grab one shoe unless they were in a hurry? They was, they was running for something. The shoe was believed to be an old military bunker, possibly used for shelter by the Nazis during World War II. But why did the soldiers seemingly leave in such a hurry? And whether they were the ones who had written the warning messages on the wall. Who took the pictures? Also, okay, so nothing happened to these people. They just went into the bunker and took... I still wouldn't have went in that goddamn bunker. You got lucky this time. Whatever creature is living down there, he was out. I don't know. He went, he was out for a walk or something. Because had he had he been inside, he would have got ate up. You got lucky. <laughs> you got damn lucky. All right. Duffel bag in the woods. Let's go. In this last story, for the person's safety, I'll refer to him as Just Bill. Bill, okay. Bill is an avid hiker who in 2016 was visiting his brother upstate New York near Downsville. Bill's brother owns a small house and a barn up there, and from time to time, Bill and other family members would go up to visit. This was in the late fall, and so the foliage was already mostly orange, and okay. more than half of the leaves had fallen off the trees. Bill was hiking a narrow trail which was not far from his brother's place. This trail is in the middle of a very rural area, and it connects from the occasional property to property. So All right. Bill stumbled across a duffel bag on the ground in the middle of the woods. It was a surprise. The Did y'all open it? looked like it was relatively new. I probably would have opened it. It didn't look dirty as if it had been sitting in the woods for an extended period of time. Yeah. There was a foul odor emanating from the bag, however. Oh, like never mind. I don't even know what's in it. Never mind. Assumed the worst, but he knew he had to open the bag to see what's inside. In don't... It actually could have been a person. There's a body in there. He was building up the courage to open the zipper to the bag, but before he could, he heard footsteps approaching from off the trail. Oh. A voice saying, that's mine. Please don't touch it. A large man oh, in a dirty shit. jacket and jeans was quickly approaching from the woods and grabbed the duffel bag off the ground. The okay. Exchange looks for a moment. Bill told the man he assumed the bag was forgotten by someone, and the man told him he was storing his kill from his hunt in the bag. Even though Bill isn't a hunter, he knew it's standard to use a cooler for storing fresh kill. Exactly. You wouldn't put it in a goddamn duffel bag, and it definitely wouldn't already be rotten if you just hunted it today. All right, man. It, it, this dude got a dead body in that bag. Not a duffel bag of all things. This also wouldn't explain the foul smell so soon, as usually dead bodies only start to smell after a few days. Yeah. Not right after death. So he apologized and continued walking down the trail with a little more speed in his step. Hell yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get up out of there. The man noticed Bill's nervousness because he heard the duffel bag get dropped on the floor as he was walking away. Oh. And as he looked back... He didn't see the man anymore. Bill nervously continued along the trail. The fuck? Taking out his phone to try to call his brother for an emergency so pickup. So the dude the put the bag back he down? didn't have any reception in the woods. All he could do was press forward and avoid crossing paths with that man again. But as he continued on, he kept hearing leaves crunching from not far behind that him. That dude is hunting you! Back, the coast seemed clear. But eventually, his fear that he was being followed became real. He saw that man following him in the distance in a stalkerish manner, hiding uh, behind the tree. Without thinking, Bill started to run as fast as he could down the trail. Uh -huh. He knew he was being followed without even looking back because he could hear the leaves being crushed for not too far behind him. Oh my goodness, Bill bro. Bill came to an abandoned looking property with overgrown grass. Leave no witnesses. He too winded to continue running. He attempted entry to the Shit. the back door. Ain't no, ain't no too winded. Inside. Bill hid under a cot in the first bedroom he found and he heard the back door open again, followed by heavy footsteps moving in a hurry. They went from room to room, and Bill could hear the man's heavy breathing from also being out of breath. Uh-huh. The man's footsteps came into the bedroom just for a second and left right after. Okay. He didn't look under either of the two cots. That's Bill heard surprising. Bill the door to the house open and slammed shut again, but he laid under the cot for another half an hour. Hell yeah, don't, don't leave immediately. Don't leave immediately. Up when he realized it would be dark soon, and he needed to get to a road to call for help. He proceeded to leave the house and run down the dirt trail by the house that was most likely once used as a driveway. Okay. Which led him to a road. From here, he eventually hitched a ride with a passing car. Hey! Bill will lift back to his brother's house, where Bill would call the local police department and report his encounter. Hell yeah! And given the severity of the case, police would show up to the house to get a more detailed description of the man's face, the location it happened, and other information. Right. Though it was never technically confirmed what was in that duffel bag. The rotting smell would already be clue enough. They knew. They the knew. The fact that the man so intently chased after Bill shows that he was hiding something that he didn't want any way. He was a, yeah, no leave no witnesses. Something a dead body. Bro. Yes, bro. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, bro, there was absolutely a dead body in that bag and that dude started stalking you because he was gonna take you out. Oh shit, you already, you seen what's in my bag or you ain't look inside of it, but you know what's in my bag. You gotta go, brother, you gotta go. I'm glad you was able to get away though, dog. Hey man, these stories was good, man, these stories was good. Two of the stories, motherfuckers almost got ate up. In the third story, the person would have got ate up <laughs> if whatever lived in that bunker was there. And in the fourth story, you know, he almost got killed. I thought it was going to be people just finding things. But these motherfuckers almost got eight. <laughs> this shit crazy, bro. But yo, that's going to do it for this Mr. Nightmare video, man. Make sure y'all show a lot of love to the video. Like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for other scary content or other content in general that I got coming for the future. And until next time, we are up out of this thing. This is your boy Darwin signing out. Thanks. Hey.